It's alive! It works! There's nothing more satisfying than a blink sketch. My new PCBs have arrived from PCB Way. These are little boards that I can connect an ESP32 S3 room module to. They've got a voltage regulator, battery charger, and a 3 watt Class D amplifier. This is the first version, and there's definitely some improvements that can be made. I've also got these adapter PCBs that I can solder my board onto and plug into a breadboard. Now you may be thinking, that's way too wide to fit on a breadboard, but people often forget that you can connect multiple breadboards together and make yourself a very wide breadboard. So let's have a look at the PCBs and see if they actually work. So I've plugged it into a USB supply and I just want to do some sanity checks on the, on the board to make sure it works before we solder on an ESP32. So these two top pins here should be ground. So we'll put one of our probes on the ground pin and this should be 3.3 volts. So we measure that, got 3.3. And then the enable pin should also be 3.3 volts. So I also want to just check what's happening on the battery charger. So we can um, probe the battery pins. Um, it's moving around a bit. That's probably because we don't have a battery connected. So what I'm going to do next is solder on a battery. And we'll see if it actually charges up without any problems. So let's do that next. So we'll just turn these two wires and put a bit of solder onto the pads. Then these should just easily reflow and we'll have our battery connected. So there we go, battery is connected. Now if all things are working, we should still be getting 3.3 volts. So let's double check that ground pin and that should be, and that actually works. So that's pretty impressive, quite pleased. So far so good. So let's see if our battery actually charges. Well, we've got a a red light, so that should mean our battery is being charged. Let's try and rearrange this. Let's see if we can actually measure the voltage at the battery. So there we go, battery is charging up nicely. So I'll leave that charging. Um, we can see it's um, drawing about 200 milliamps, which is about right given the resistor I used. So let's leave that for a while and see what happens. Okay, charging is complete. The LED has turned blue. And we can see the current has dropped down to, well, practically nothing really. So let's measure our battery voltage. I also found these uh, iron probes, which makes it yeah. So our battery is charging charged up so that's great should still have 3.3 volts so let's double check that so there we have our ground pin and our 3.3 volt pin so that's pretty promising let's have a look at the schematic and then we'll get a module soldered on there's really not much to say about the USB connection we've got two 5.1k resistors on the CC1 and CC2 lines these will let us pull potentially 3 amps at 5 volts from our USB power supply, assuming it can actually provide it. The amplifier schematic is also pretty straightforward. We've got its decoupling capacitors, and the only thing really special is this resistor, which should switch it into a mode where it takes the left channel and right channels and mixes them together. The battery charger is the classic TP4057 chip. The only exciting thing here is that I used a dual colour LED to indicate charging and standby mode. I've done a bit of bomb optimization by using 5.1k resistors pretty much everywhere I can get away with it. It's probably made very little difference to the total cost, but it's kind of fun. The interesting part for me on the schematic is the power circuit. I basically borrowed this from the unexpected maker's tiny S3 schematic. This solves a really interesting problem. We need to take power from either the USB supply or the battery, and we need to stop the USB going straight to the battery or the battery feeding power back into the USB. Now, an obvious way to solve this problem is to use two diodes to isolate the supplies, and that's what I've done for the supply to the amplifier IC. A normal diode is not really suitable for this. A 0.6 voltage drop on our battery's nominal voltage of 3.7 volts takes it down to 3.1 volts, and we want a system voltage of 3.3 volts. Now, an obvious solution is to just use a shock key diode. They've got a low forward voltage, and that is what I've done for the supply to the amplifier IC. 
but if we look at the data sheet for the Schottky diode we are using, we can see that the voltage drop is surprisingly high when we are drawing a lot of current. At just 200 milliamps, the voltage drop is typically 500 millivolts, and our ESP32 could draw up to 500 milliamps when it's using Wi Fi or Bluetooth, so the voltage drop could actually be quite a bit higher. Our low dropout regulator needs 190 millivolts headroom, so even the shock key diode isn't going to do it for us. So let's have a look at the very clever MOSFET approach and see how that works. Our battery is controlled via a P channel MOSFET. Looking at the datasheet for the MOSFET we're using, we need to make an educated guess at what the RDS on will be. Our battery is going to be around 3.7 volts, so our VGS should be between these two rows, so around 0.3 ohms. If we're drawing 500 milliamps, that will give us a voltage drop of 150 millivolts. With our 3.7 volt battery, we'll have 3.55 volts left for the LDO, giving it 0.25 volts to play with, which should be plenty. There are some quite clever things about this circuit. When the USB is connected, we have 5 volts on the gate, so the P-channel MOSFET turns off. Power feeds into the system via the diode, and it can't reach the battery because the FET is turned off, and the body diode of the FET is reverse biased. If the USB is disconnected, then the gate of the MOSFET is taken low by this pull-down resistor. At the same time, the battery voltage can flow through the body diode, taking the source of the MOSFET high. We now have a negative gate source voltage, which turns our P-channel MOSFET on, letting the full battery voltage through to the system. The diode on the USB supply blocks this from going back through to the USB port. It's a very elegant and clever circuit. We can check it actually works by probing the voltages on the source of the MOSFET. With the USB disconnected, the battery voltage comes through. And with the USB connected, we have the USB voltage minus the diode drop, which is quite small as we aren't drawing much current. And if we check the voltage of the battery, it's completely fine. There's no USB power coming here. So let's get the module soldered on, and we'll see if it actually works. Now I could manually solder the module onto the board. I've done this before, but it's a bit fiddly. So instead, I'm going to try and use my mini hot plate. We'll apply some solder paste to the pads. I'm really not sure how much to put on, and this is probably way too much. And then we'll just position the module in place. Since we've got components on the bottom of the board, I'm going to use the breadboard adapter to lift the board off the hot plate. I'm hoping that the heat will transfer through it and it will get hot enough. Well, it does work. I had to bump the temperature up quite a bit, which was a bit worrying as I don't want to damage the components that are already on the board, but the solder paste has all melted. We've got some reasonable results. There's a couple of solder bridges caused by too much solder paste, but that's easily fixable with the soldering iron. On closer inspection, I think I've done a pretty reasonable job. Everything seems to be connected nicely. I'm actually quite surprised. Now, before putting this anywhere near my computer, I want to check the current draw. Ideally, I'd hook this up to a current limited supply, but I don't have a lab bench power supply. If there's anyone watching who manufacture them, get in touch. Everything does seem good. We're not drawing too much current at all. It's looking pretty promising. Well, I've plugged it into the computer. Let's see if we get any USB devices showing up. And we do. This is looking very, very promising. I've got a simple blink sketch here, and it uploads. Our module is fully functional. And what's more, the LED actually blinks. This is a resounding success. I've got a video on minimal dev boards and what you can strip off and still get away with on the screen right now. But this video is now pretty long, so we'll check the speaker and connect up a display in a follow up video. Thanks for watching.